بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we know that it is important for us to visit one another, especially when one of us is not doing too well. So on this day, we remember those from amongst us who are ill, sickly, who could not make it here this evening or wherever they are across the globe whether they are listening right now will listen later or may not not even listen we ask allah to grant them cure remember when a person's heart is softened it is actually when they are not doing too well when they are in need of prayers when they are in a condition that may not be 100 percent generally their heart is ready to receive any goodness and this is why it's important for us to make it our business to go out to visit those who are not doing too well. A good word can go a long way in not only boosting their morale, making them feel better, but even in drawing them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, we always remember one another. We always pray for one another. I receive so many messages on a daily basis. Please pray for this person, that person, sometimes by name, sometimes without a name. I'm sure it happens to a lot of us. Let's pray that Allah grant them shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them good health. Remember, when you pray for someone else, the angels are making the same prayer for you. So it's actually dua for your own good health. The same applies to those who are incarcerated, those who are in the prisons at the moment. I actually receive emails and letters from the inmates who listen to this program live and even later on. It's amazing. I wouldn't have guessed this. But for a few years, it has been happening. My brothers, my sisters, we remember you. Our hearts are with you. No matter what has happened, we are not really too interested in what has happened. The fact that the correctional services are taking care of you, we are quite confident that by the time you come out of there, you will have corrected yourself and we are ready to accept you back in society and community. Amen. My beloved brothers and sisters, the reason I start this way is because sometimes, even if there's nothing wrong, it's important for us to visit one another. You maintain family relations. You go for a reason. That purpose is in order to boost the relationship. We have something known as a rahim or the will qurba, those who are related to us through the womb, those who have a relationship through blood with us. We should be keeping some ties with them. It does not have to be so much that they get irritated with us. Nor should it be so little that we don't even know who our relatives are and we cannot fulfill their rights. If we don't know who our family members are, if we have not introduced our children to the broader family, how then would we be able to fulfill the great act of worship known as maintaining family ties when we don't even know who they are? So it's important. A lot of the older people used to take pride in the family unit. I hope it is not done in order to draw tribal lines or lines in terms of caste, etc. Because those lines are the lines of the period of ignorance. They mean nothing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many families are suffering because the parents think that they are above the others because they come from a family that belongs to a caste Billah, that they claim is higher. Yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على على عربي ولا لأبيض على أسود إلا بالتقوى. There is no virtue of an Arab over a non-Arab or a non-Arab over an Arab or a white over a black except by piety which is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you treat your brothers as equals and your sisters as equals. And you never ever use this because if you do, you will never be able to save yourself from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it descends. Imagine when Allah's punishment comes, it will be too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand. Wallahi, today I was, 
I received a clip of a young boy from the Gambia reading the Quran. There were actually three or four boys. Each one wanted to read the Quran. And the Quran was so melodious, I chose the smallest or the youngest person and I posted it up on Instagram with a caption encouraging us to do more regarding our connection with the Quran. Who would have guessed that in West Africa, there are thousands of people who only speak the Arabic language. Did you know that? And it's not their mother tongue. They have ensured from a young age that they speak Arabic and they have memorized the Quran better than you and I can imagine from a very early age. They have competitions and contests in Sierra Leone, in the Gambia, in Ghana, in Nigeria, in so many places, subhanAllah, in Mali, such that our little competitions would actually be dwarfed by the size of theirs. They have stadiums filled with hundreds of thousands of people, subhanAllah. They are serving Allah. They are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we sitting comfortable here think that we're a big deal sometimes. And when we look at them sometimes, shaitan makes us think that we are better. Never ever. Never. We are not better. In fact, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows the level of piety. Those who are struggling in the townships, in the villages, only Allah knows their struggle. Yet they are dedicated to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us. This is why we say there is no room for pride and arrogance. You never know where you're going to be the minute you close your eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So when we visit each other, we should be visiting for the right reasons. But there is an etiquette or there are rules and regulations governing how you visit someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah An-Nur makes mention of some of these rules. Verse number 27, Allah says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. O you who believe, do not enter homes that are not yours until you have done something known as istinas. You have made your presence known. You have actually sought permission to enter a house that is not yours. Now this happens in so many ways. Sometimes a long time back, we used to get to the door. We used to sometimes clear the throat a little bit. Maybe, you know, people can hear you as you're talking a little bit loudly and you knock the door so that they know there is someone at the door. They would then ask you who you were. It is important to answer, to answer that with a correct straightforward answer don't say it's me because me every one of us is a me isn't it so if i say me you say me we all me me's right may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness so you say your name loud and clear they should know and thereafter guess what they have a right to tell you to go back home did you know that Allahu Akbar. Imagine you arrived at someone's house, you knock the door and they say, brother, we are a little bit busy now. Please, can you come back later? And you say, but I came from so far. Well, Allah has made it easy for us. You know, in the Quran, in verse number 28, Allah says, وَإِن If you are told to go back, then go back. It is purer for you. It is better for you. They might be busy. They might be having an intimate moment. They might be having, for example, another plan. They may have decided to lay the table. And this brings me to the point, some people, it seems, intentionally go for a free meal. So they arrive at the time of a meal, knock the door. Where are we going for lunch today? Hey, let's go to Buddha Muhammad there, man. You know, we'll go to his house. There's some nice food all the time. Arrive at exactly 12.29 because 12.30 they lay the table. They'll open the door, we'll have a chow and we'll come back. That's how some people think. Well, I hope not, but that's what it seems like, right? People go at the wrong time. So learn to go at the right time. Today, Allah has made it easy for us. We have technology, phone. I think it is against the etiquette of a Muslim to actually Go without communicating, without phoning, without making prior arrangements before we needed an appointment for a doctor. Now you need an appointment to visit your brother's house on a Sunday morning. It's not so difficult, but you communicate. They might have had a plan. They might want to go out. So as you enter the door, everyone is edgy. Assalamu alaikum. 
Wa alaykum as salam. They're waiting for you. Okay, what are you going to say? Uh, how are you doing? Fine. That means get lost. Please leave. <laughs> Can you please go? We were planning an outing. You have just spoiled our morning. Remember this, my brothers and sisters, it's reality. Allah speaks about this in Surah An Nur in, different, in a different way, but I'm giving you a current day example. It's a reality. Send a message. Can we please visit you on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock? They'll tell you no. Visit at 3 in the afternoon. But my brothers and sisters, something even more interesting than the visit. To go is one thing, but to know when to leave is more important. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes we enter the house, subhanallah, we sit there for hours on end. I know of cases where family members dread the coming of a certain granny because she doesn't know when to go. So they say if she comes, she's going to sit all afternoon. So now when she knocks the door, she's not welcome. Not because we are busy, but because she doesn't know when to leave. Well, sometimes we need to be kind enough to say, ma'am, my sister, you know what? You've overshot here. Yeah? We've made you three cups of teas. We fried you three sets of savories. It's about time you left. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Obviously, we would not do that. We would not do that. But sometimes within the heart, we feel this. Why do we become hypocritical? Because people force us sometimes to do that. Let's not be from among those who make it difficult for others. Imagine here Allah is saying, when you want to visit someone, when you enter a home, make sure that you are known. Everything is known about your visit. Look, I'll visit you at 10. Inshallah, by half 10, I'll be away. And this is why it's better to be shorter than longer because it's better for people to say, but you didn't even sit. They expect you next time than for them to actually think, you know what, this went on a little bit too long. The same applies to this particular lecture. Before, I used to speak for one hour. Then I chopped it to 45 minutes. Now half an hour. Perhaps next year it might be 15 minutes. Why? The reason is people's concentration span becomes less and less. The more technology advances, the less they want to hear a person live. Subhanallah. Especially when it runs through 30 days or the whole of the month of Ramadan. I'd rather you leave from here saying, you know what? It was so interesting and it ended so abruptly. I didn't even know how the time finished. Then for you to sit here an hour later, you say, hey, I'm not going back tomorrow. That man, he can tune, you know, he can speak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So for this reason, we need to be short to the point. It's okay. We don't need to complete the entire Quran. We need to be disseminating good beautiful teachings that we can practice upon and that's what's important so this message i started with is absolutely important let us understand that when we enter the homes we should make sure we do so with the right reasons and we should make sure that we do not overstay even if you are to visit someone for a few days make sure that they are comfortable with you remember when you're very close to someone the rules can change a little bit because you know they really want you there they really want you there. But still, if you're there for a shorter period, they will appreciate you more than if you were there for a longer time. And I want to say one last thing before I move on. It seems like the more modern we are becoming, the less hospitable we are becoming. A long time ago, our mothers, our grandmothers, I hope some of them we may not have seen them, but the stories we hear is they were so happy, so excited. They used to welcome the guests. The guests used to stay. They used to, you know, put up the, the, the dishes and everything else. As soon as the visitors came in, they would stay for a meal, 20, 50 people. It's becoming less and less common. Nowadays, mashallah, Allah's made things easy. You know, you have spur around the corner and you have various others around the corner. What happens? Well, we'll eat together. You know what? Just go and buy something from around the corner. Mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be hospitable. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhiri fal yukrim daifa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, if you believe in Allah and the last day, you should honor your guest. You should honor your guest. That having been said, don't go to someone's house and say, hey, look, I've come to you with a hadith that you need to honor the guest, you know. <laughs> don't say that because you need to know that at times, you know, we abuse the religion in order to suit us. And this should not be the case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, forgive us and grant us such goodness that others are encouraged when they see us. They are so happy and delighted rather than those who see us and they run away. They don't even want to greet because they know how much of their time we are going to waste. 
Then there is a beautiful verse. Many times people speak about women and the way they should cover and the way they should be placed in a closet and the way they should be this and that. Not realizing that the rules of the Sharia are not concerning women alone. No. And some of that is a little bit ridiculous. What I say is some of what people create is far beyond what Allah has dictated. Why do we go beyond what Allah has dictated when Allah has given honor and dignity to a female, when Allah has given her such respect that when it comes to the lowering of the gaze in Surah to Nur, Allah starts with the males. And then the females are spoken about later on regarding covering first the males. Allah says in verse number 30 of Surah to Nur, Tell the believing males to lower their gazes. This is way before the women were told anything. Tell the believing males to lower their gazes and to protect their chastity, to protect their private parts subhanallah clear terms in the arabic language you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses clear cut terms and allah says tell the men to look after themselves be modest in your dressing my beloved brothers it doesn't mean that just because you are muscular you know you can have your mini skirt on your bicep you know what that means <laughs> You have your shirt and you're showing your body and every and you are intentionally creating a disaster because you are parading in front of all the women and you think that no, the rule is for the women. They should lower their gaze. My brother, take it easy. You also need to put all of this into clothing that is fitting correctly, fitting correctly, not two sizes too small such that your shirt is tearing. And as a woman passes, you actually flex your muscle and dah, it tears, you know. Like you're a Hulk. If that is the case, Wallahi, what you've done is wrong, my brothers and sisters. Don't you agree? It's wrong. You need to also relax, cool down. You've got the muscle. The idea is you need to be powerful. That's what it is. You want to be a strong person. What's the point of a person who's like a feather, but he's got big muscles and he's frightened of a fly or a mosquito in the room? It happens. You see a huge person. There's a cockroach. Ah, cockroach. And he wants to run away. What were all the muscles about? Those, all, those muscles were actually for the, for the wrong reason. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So much comes to the mind, my brothers and sisters, we are guilty. We need to learn to cover. We need to learn to cover correctly. I want to also address the issue of the trousers today. Please, let's wear trousers. It should be called a trouser, inshallah. You know, not something whereby you go into sujood and the man behind you doesn't know whether to go into sujood or to finish his salah there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It's happening and it's happening more. Yesterday, here in Cape Town, I saw someone, I presume he wasn't a Muslim, and look, they are free to dress how they wish. And I saw him literally with his underpants, they were on, but his pants were below his backside, well below his backside. And I was shocked. I couldn't tell anyone, did you see that? They would tell me, what were you doing looking there? <laughs> But I couldn't help but notice that this is where the condition has gone. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, we are living in a community and a country that permits you to wear whatever you want to wear. So as a Muslim, you wear what you are supposed to wear and leave the others to do what they have to. You do what you have to, leave them to do what they have to. You don't have to get upset and angry and excited. Consider yourself. You are living in a country that permits people to wear what they want. Because of that rule, you are actually allowed to dress in whatever way you wish. So if you did not like that rule, then perhaps they might not allow you to cover in the same way that they are doing that in other countries. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us appreciate the freedom in our countries. There are countries that claim to boast freedom, but using the word freedom, they are taking away the freedom of people to actually cover themselves. So therefore, I am telling you, you do what you're supposed to. Let the others do what they want to, whatever they have to. It's okay. Those in authority have permitted them to do that. You're a Muslim. You need to know you are governed by 
a modest dress code. And the term modesty is interpreted differently by different religions and different inclinations. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to understand the meaning of modesty according to us and to fulfill it in the best possible way. Amin. So while we are fulfilling our own duty, we are allowing the others their right to fulfill whatever they believe is correct because we are living in a free nation. Let's understand this, never misunderstand it. So my beloved brothers and sisters, only after that, in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the women, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُضْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا Amazing verse. Similar wording. Allah says, and then tell the believing women to lower their gazes, to protect their modesty, their chastity. And to conceal their beauty. This is a verse of the Quran. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to us. Verse number 31 of Surah An Nur. And this is why we say, my brothers and sisters, we need to know we're talking about saving ourselves. To save yourself from the calamities of this earth, you need to cover yourself modestly. If you don't, the wrong people may be attracted to you and your life may turn upside down. Say you're happily married and you go out on the street and you go out into the mall and you're showing every droplet of your beauty. And there is a wealthy man or a mischievous boy or anyone else and they start becoming obsessed with you. They follow you. They stalk you. They harass you. They trouble you. What might happen? You might incline or you may not incline. If you incline, it spells disaster. You have a wonderful husband, you have a beautiful home, you have lovely children, but shaitan will come and make beautiful that which is haram because it is outside of the fence. You can be having the best mangoes, but when you see the tree next door, for some reason those mangoes look brighter than the ones in your basket. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Don't let that happen to you. Mangoes are mangoes and the man will go. <laughs> Okay, that was just off the cuff, by the, by the way. But it's a reality. You cannot allow the man to come. You have to let him go. In the sense that you need to realize who you are allowed to let into your closed circle and who from a distance, there's just a greeting, if anything. You need to know this. So if you are to show and expose, it is going to affect people. I know people might say, well, I'm free to do what I want. Well, that's the way people look at it, but there is a price to pay for it. So it's okay. Do what you have to, but remember there's a price. If you want to pay the price, well, we told you about the price. You're going to probably be paying about $10 million, for example, in loss. And uh, it's okay. If you can afford that, go and enjoy. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. A mu'min and a Muslim realizes, you know what? The price to be paid is too severe. I lose my family, lose my children, lose a lovely spouse. And this goes either way. It's not just for women. It's for men as well. You know, sometimes, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. Sometimes we want to show off everything we have. Showing it off. Yes, a man perhaps might be a little bit more public sometimes, but... No excuse. Women also have a role to play in community and society. That role shall be played respectably and respectfully. And the clothing in both cases will be modest. Not only that, the way you speak to one another should be respectful. Not everyone is after that which is immoral. No. There are a lot of clean people out there. There are a lot of people who might speak to you in the best possible way without bad intention at all. Subhanallah. But sometimes when we are dirty in our minds, we think everyone else is dirty. That is also a sickness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So if a person exposes their beauty, there will be a price that they perhaps would pay. We need to understand that that price, we may not be able to afford it. It might be so expensive that we become socially bankrupt. That means we lose everything in our social circle. It can happen. It has happened. And only later on do people realize now before i continue let me say one more point and that is beloved brothers and sisters when you are married go out of your way to make sure that your spouse is reassured hundreds of times a day 
that you adore them, you love them, you, they mean everything to you. And to you, they are the most beautiful human being. And try and be that for them. Remember this. Because many people take it for granted. You're married, you know, there is a honeymoon for a little while. And once the moon is out of sight, what happens? The honey disappears. Where does she go? <laughs> Only Allah knows. The problem is you have been ignoring her. You haven't been talking to her. You don't look at her. You come back from work. You're on your phone. You, on, you turn on the telly. You're busy here. You're tired. You read a few things. You're with your friends. Come back at 12. Who are, who are you to do that to her? You're supposed to be a spouse. So fulfill the rights of one another. Because if you don't, my brothers and sisters, the very fabric of society shall be crumbling because a home is broken. One broken, two broken. So many homes are broken because we don't realize the responsibility is great. You are married. Come on, that's it. It's over. Now you concentrate on what you have. Your children need you. They need to grow up. They need you to be a figure there for their mother or father. Remember this, my beloved brothers and sisters. So if you're married, go out of your way to make your spouse feel special. Not just tonight, but every night. And not just in Ramadan or Eid. No, every day, go out of your way to make your spouse feel special. It is an act of worship to ensure that your spouse feels that you are very closely connected to her or to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Let's move on. In the home, it is important for us to liven it up. The children will learn the house is filled with blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy descends in the home. Allah makes mention in Surah An-Nur, verse number 36 of the men who actually praise Allah in their homes. فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعَ وَيُذْكَرَ فِيهَا اسْمُهُ يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ فِيهَا بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْآصَالِ رِجَالِ Allah speaks about the homes and how there are men who praise Allah morning and evening in the houses. They praise Allah. Who are those men? رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ They are the men whom their businesses and their buying and selling does not distract them from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fulfill their salah, they read their Quran, they engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they liven their houses with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are never distracted by business dealings or by buying and selling, not at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are the ones who fear. The day of judgment. They are the ones who are conscious of the day that the hearts will be turning and the eyes, the vision will be turning the day of judgment. If we are conscious of the day of judgment, we will prepare for that day because we want to save ourselves on that day by doing what? Life in the home. Sometimes, and I promise you, people call in saying, you know what? I can hear sounds in the house. I can hear noise. I can hear voices. A lot of the times, probably your child on the internet in the other room. But sometimes, yes, I do agree. You are hearing things. You are seeing things. You are smelling things. Perhaps you need to get up and clean your home. Clean it in two ways, physically and spiritually. There is no salah in your house. There is never adhan that is called in your home. There is no Quran that is read in your house. It is a house of doom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. You know what is a house of doom? Doom is the name of a spray that kills cockroaches. Trust me, we wouldn't like to try that trick here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We don't pray in the home. Our families, our children have never witnessed us in sujood for Allah. And we expect that house to be livened. 
No, it won't happen, my brothers and sisters. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us clearly that there are men who live in their houses, no amount of worldly gain will distract them from engaging in the remembrance of Allah. Brothers and sisters, I am very, very touched by this beautiful city of Cape Town. People ask me, why do you keep on going there? Well, actually, I've gone to so many places, but it seems like I kept on coming here, although I've given it a break. One of the reasons is, take a look at the keenness to learn the deen in this beautiful city. The keenness to be connected to the Quran and those of knowledge. May Allah accept it from all of you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us something similar. I've been to other cities that I've seen something similar. I went to the city of Kano, for example, in northern Nigeria. What I witnessed was actually amazing, unique. Thousands of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them steadfast. All interested in the deen, connected to the deen. And amazingly, we have that here in Cape Town. And people come and they are dedicated and they don't mind sitting for hours on end. Although the half an hour that I'm supposed to be speaking for today has just come to an end. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow.